Hi, plan friends. It's springtime, so let's repot some stuff on Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Okay, plan friends, you might be in the midst of a corona quarantine like I am on day six, and I am losing my mind a little bit, so I figured that there is no better time than now to repot your plants for a number of reasons. Number one, if you've been in quarantine, if you've been in isolation, getting your hands in some soil. I've been craving getting my hands in some soil. I've been waiting for a shipment of a spoma soil that finally came in today, and I knew this was the first thing I wanted to do. We want to get back to the earth. We want to reconnect with our plants. And what better way to do that than by making sure that they're in the proper homes. So springtime is a great time to repot plants because a lot of them have been kind of hibernating throughout the winter and they're ready to like wake up. And in order to wake up, we want to kind of signal that and also help them and make sure that they're in, they have enough space to bloom and grow as they enter their bloom, uh, their growing season. If you're like me, I've had plants for three years now, and a lot of my plants are in the same vessel that they've been in for a couple of years. And the rule of thumb is every one or two years, you want to check your plant and make sure that they have enough uh, space for more roots to grow. Signs that your plant is outgrowing its pot is if you look at the bottom and if you look at the bottom of your pot and you see roots growing out of the bottom of them, I'm going to show you an example. If you look at the bottom of your pot and there are roots growing out, this is a sign that it is outgrowing the pot and it needs to be repotted. If your plants also maybe are looking a little sad, looking a little wilted, if they've been in your, their homes for a while, I would say now is a great time to check and set them up for, for success. Usually it's recommended to do your repotting in the spring um, and not in the winter before or while the plants are dormant. So I have a lot of plants that need to be repotted um, for different reasons. I've had plants that I've been rooting in water um, that need to get potted up into soil. I have... Um, I kicked this plant out of its current pot to pot up another plant that I need to give a little bit of a bigger home to support how the plant has grown. Um, and plant friends, my new rule for myself is that I am only going to use pots with drainage holes in them. So a drainage hole is, um, a drainage hole, as you can see, is the hole at the bottom of the pot where the water runs through. If you're a beginning plant parent, I can't suggest enough to only do this method. Um, you see people that put like lava rocks at the bottom or horticultural charcoal, and that works for people. It's worked for me. I've done that for the last three years, but I just think that you're going to have a greater success rate if you have drainage. And there are a few ways that we can do that that I'm going to show you today. Um, so let's just like dive in. I think number one, because this guy is just looking at me. So he's been in a uh, octagon shaped pot. So his soil is a little bit like sh it's shaped like the octagon and you can see the roots. He's really not too root bound, but I'm just going to free him up a little bit. Um, give the roots a chance. I just took a class at the New York Botanical Garden and they said that roots are made to be broken. So when you're potting stuff up, don't get stressed if you end up breaking a root or two, that's actually going to instigate new growth. Um, so I am going to just give this a little shape because then it's going to allow the plants to root down and not continue growing circularly, circularly around the bottom of the pot. So I'm going to pop this guy up. This is also a succulent type plant. I think it's a Kalanchoe, Kalanchoe. Um, I'm going to put it in terracotta. So I got this pot. It's so cute. Um, when I was traveling in Oklahoma City, and it comes with this really cute matching little um, saucer. And it's from naturally sourced Oklahoma City, Oklahoma clay, which I thought was really cute. Um, if you travel out for work like I did last year and you can't collect plants, I loved collecting pots. So a lot of the pots were going to be... Um, like this I picked up while I was in Boston. It's a really cool way to support local artisans and collect, um, expand your plant collection by expanding your pot collection without being stressed to like bring new plants home all the time. So for this one, I'm going to use Espoma Organic is the soil that I've been using for, I want to say like two years now. They're an amazing family owned company and they're all organic products. 
They're super sustainable. They're commit eco-friendly. Like they're the best company ever. I love them. So they have a citrus. Oh, sorry. They have a cactus mix, which um, is super draining for succulents and cacti. And then they have their normal potting soil. So I'm going to be rotating between the two. They also sent me um, a lot of people. They also do just straight bags of perlite. Um, perlite is like a puffed lava rock and it helps aerate your soil. So if you like to water your plants or if you have a lot of succulents or if you um, are just looking to create your own at home airy soil, perlite is a great option. So for some of these plants, I might experiment with like adding some perlite, extra perlite into the soil to even increase that drainage because also in the spring and summer, I love watering my plants. I like to water, it's part of my morning practice. So I would rather have soil that drains on the more aerated side than not because I would rather water my plants twice a week and have an airier soil than um, have to only water my plants once a week or once every two weeks because the soil just doesn't need it. So you kind of will figure that out as you grow in your plant parenthood in time. Um, but that's what works for me. So, repotting rules. Um, you never want to pot up. So you can repot, which is take the plant out, maybe change the soil and put the plant back in, or you can pot up, which is putting a plant in a larger, if it's outgrown its current vessel, you put the plant in a larger vessel. Um, so I am potting this plant up so what I did is I'm going to start with a little soil at the bottom. I've teased the roots at the bottom so they're free. I've given them a really nice place to relax. <coughs> you can see this cactus soil. There's like pieces of bark. There's a ton of perlite, super nutrient rich. It also has all sorts of good stuff to take care of it. Then you put the plant on top and then I'm going to top dress it with some more soil. And you want to press down when you're repotting. Um, I, when I first started repotting, I was like really nervous to like hurt the roots or like pack it in too tight. But the roots need to feel supported. They need to, the plant in order for the plant to stand upright needs to be supported at the bottom. So I wouldn't be too nervous about that. Also, as I'm replanting, I'm going to be checking these plants out. And I noticed that this one is a little etioliated. It's grown. All of the leaves are at the bottom. So I'm actually going to cut it down here, remove this leaf and stick it in the soil. And these, uh, it'll root again. And that'll also just shorten the plant because this is so tall, it's like getting hard to put anywhere. So I'm going to grab my shears. Um, another fun tip for repotting, pruning, getting your plants ready for spring. I have been... <laughs> For years, I was using just like my normal scissor and then Modern Sprout sent me their clippers. These clippers are so great and it's kind of a game changer for your plants to have like a designated set of really sharp sterile pruning shears. I kind of like didn't really subscribe to that in the beginning, but now that I've, um, I'm going to give it a trim right under the node. I'm going to give it a trim under this node. Um, stick my finger in the soil and then stick it in there. Um, it's nice to just have a designated pair of plant scissors. I know that's silly and extra and by all means you don't need it if you don't want to, but if you are like looking to be an extra plant parent and if you like things and you like to like grow your kid of plant parent stuff, I would say like this is a, the clippers are like a really nice fun way to do, to do that. And then you're not, your partner isn't always like, where'd you put the scissors? Are you pruning again? You know, they end up like getting left places. So at the end of this, I'm going to put all of these plants that I pot up in my sink and wilder them all at the same time. So number one, we are done. Number two, this is a plant that I have let root and water a little bit too long. To be honest with you, I don't know how this is going to do when I pot it up, but we're going to try. So um, this is a lemon lime philodendron that I got. If you can see, there's so many roots. That's too many roots. <laughs> um, but I water propagated it um, for a friend who requested it. Um, as I said, it's a little... Uh, there might be too many roots for this to be successful, to be plotted up into dirt. But what I'm going to do is trim these roots back just a little bit. I'm going to pot it up in dirt and then in soil. And then I'm going to really monitor the soil. I'm going to keep the soil a lot... 
um, more moist than normal to kind of help the roots adjust to the soil. And I'm just gonna monitor the plant very closely. So another way, I'm gonna trim these roots. Another way that you can create drainage um, with a pot with no drainage. So like I was at Marshall's the other day and I bought this really cute pot. It has no drainage. It has these like adorable little legs. So um, the hack to create drainage is keep your nursery pots. Keep, a, keep your plastic nursery pots. At, I don't know if you can see back here, but I have them stacked up. And then slip the pots into the pots that you buy with no drainage. So then this pot becomes a cash po, uh, which is basically a decorative pot that's going to hold your nursery pot. And then this is what you water. So after I pop this plant up, I can either water it right there and just make sure that there isn't like water pooling in, or I can actually take the pot out, water it in my sink, let the water drip through like you should, and then pop it back in. And you're not gonna be like totally stressed out about drainage. And if you've watered the plant enough or too much or too little, um, it's for me like the easiest way to know that you're successfully watering plants and not kill them. Also shout out to my friend, my engagement gift he gave me was this like really beautiful um, vintage like little shovel, what are these called? Tr trowels um, that I'm gonna try and remember to use to help save soil. So this one I'm going to use just the normal Estoma potting mix because it's with a philodendron, which are pretty hardy. So I'm gonna start with some soil in the bottom. And then since these roots are long, I'm going to put the root, uh, put the plants in. I've nestled the roots kind of at the bottom and then I'm gonna fill with more soil and keep filling. So those roots have like nice layers of soil to make a home in. And as I fill, I'm just kind of using my fingers to like move the plants so they each have like a nice little place to grow. And these are really prolific growers. They grow so fast, it's crazy. And they're super easy to propagate. So if you ever wanted to like make a cutting for a plant friend, this is a great, you literally just cut them at the node, stick them in water and you'll have a new plant in less than a month. All right, so that's potting number two. Next up is, I'm not gonna pot this plant up, but I have had this plant in its pot for two years and I've just noticed that the soil has just started looking like a little moldy. It's just like not looking as like healthy and kind of supple the way it normally is. So I wanna kind of just take a peek under the hood and check out what's going on um, and backfill with some fresh soil, which has those nutrients it, um, that can help feed the plant. So let's take a little look-see. I'm gonna use this to help coax the plant out because it's been in here for a long time. Come on. Here we go. Yeah, everything seems to be fine. We've got roots. We've got a little baby growing. So I'm just gonna shake off some of this old soil and pot up with some new soil just so we can kind of replenish some of those nutrients and we'll keep going. But I'm gonna definitely keep it in the same pot that it's been in. Okay, so this is what I'm really excited about. Like I said, I am only gonna do plants with drainage from now on. I have had three snake plants for like three years. I inherited them from a friend and they came uh, in pots with no drainage. So because that's how I inherited them from my friend, I didn't really do anything about it and I kind of left them in their pots. Then at one point I separated them and I like repotted them, but I still put them in plants with in planters with no drainage. So I want to go back. Snake plants love to be treated like succulents. I don't water them very often, but I also feel like I haven't been watering them because I've been so nervous that they have no drainage. So ironically, this one, which is looking very sad, I'm hoping to resuscitate 
I have in a pot with no drainage that says killed all my plants. <laughs> and then this one, you can tell there's some yellowing starting to happen. And I think it's because it's been in this pot in this soil for like over two years and it needs a little boost of some new soil. And I think I need to be watering it a little bit better because I'm just so nervous every time I go and water it, I get so scared that there's water sitting at the bottom of the pot. So the trick to these pots is now we've just got to find nursery pots that fit in here, pop these guys up into those nursery pots, and then we'll do exactly what I said for the other plant. We're gonna just going to have the plant in the nursery pot and water the nursery pot, take it out of its cash po, and then put it back. No, I think this is going to be the winner. But you can just be like me and become a hoarder. <laughs> um, this also really doesn't have many roots, so I actually feel really good about putting it in a smaller pot. And then it'll just sit kind of deep in this planter, or I can put something, I could fill the bottom of the planter with like pebbles or something to like prop this up to like the level that I want it to be. Um, because this is a snake plant and also they do like really fast draining soil as well, I think we're gonna stick with the cactus mix um, and maybe mix a little perlite in because why the heck not? It's fun, you feel like a little mad scientist when you mix stuff up. And I'm gonna water that, and then as you see, I'm simply gonna slip it in there. It'll live in that pot. It looks like a normal plant. I'll probably prop it up with something at the bottom and then take it out, water it, and put it back. Um, but I, I'm gonna water all these first, so I'm gonna put that in my sink. And now, my mom got me this planter. It's an owl. I went to Rice University, I'm a rice owl. So let's take the plant out. Now that will fit perfectly inside there and I won't be stressed out about whether or not it's getting enough water. And the last repotting of the day is the cutest repotting of the day. It's this new little Hoya carry that I got. So um, I picked this up for $8. I'm thinking of getting these at my wedding they're a little heart-shaped plant. They're so freaking cute. I'm obsessed with them. They want to be treated like succulents, so you want to let them dry out. Um, but the, pl the pot that it's in is so tiny. So I'm just going to pot it up into this, like, it's the smallest pot that I have in my apartment. It's so small. Um, I'm just going to give it a little more soil to, like, snuggle into, um, and it sits on my southern-facing window. And I got it because I wanted to kind of see how it acts in an apartment before I maybe give them to all of my wedding guests. So let's see what this guy, is he going to be easy to get out? I've let the soil really dry out, <coughs> which um, if you know you're going to be repotting, it's good to like water the plant a couple of days ahead of time. There we go, my little guy. Oh, you're so cute. So cute. And he's got some nice roots growing in the bottom of the pot. And there we go, definitely one of my cutest plant purchases I've made. How freaking cute is that? So plant friends, thanks for spending some time with me while I repot. Just to recap, make sure that you're using healthy soil from the bag. Do not go outside and get soil from your garden. You want bagged potting soil to make sure that it's sterile, it doesn't have bugs. Um, I love Espoma Organic, use the 
use whatever calls to you. Um, but I'm finding that a higher quality soil is leading to uh, less dead plants. Because as you can see, one over water can really deteriorate, deteriorate a plant's roots. Um, you wanna repot in the spring. You wanna repot only um, up one size. So if your plant is in a four inch pot, you're gonna wanna only pot up to a six inch pot. You don't wanna take a plant that's in a four inch pot and put it in a 10 inch pot. It's gonna be way too much soil that it's not gonna dry out in time. Um, or you just wanna repot and keep it in the same sized pot um, and just give it a little refresh of soil, a little refresh of nutrients as it enters the growing season. Um, and if you can avoid repotting as you, as you get close to winter when a lot of our plants go dormant, you really wanna try and aim to repot in the spring or early summer so the plant can kind of get settled in in its growing season and be nice and comfortable before winter comes around. Um, make sure that you're watering appropriately, make sure that you're putting the plants in the right amount of light because really plant care comes down to light and watering and making sure that the plant is getting the right amount for whatever plant you're caring for. So it's also super important to making sure you understand what your plant needs. So until next time, plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Hey plant friends, if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe below. Also, check out my podcast, Bloom and Grow Radio, with houseplant care tips and really interesting interviews with plant people all over the world. And follow me on Instagram. All of the links are in the show description below. Keep blooming and keep growing. Do, 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 do,